Hello, welcome to the Talk to Defeat ALS podcast. I'm your host, Tony Heil, Director of Communications and Public Policy at the ALS Association Greater Philadelphia Chapter. Um, this is another five-minute tip with my friend Elisa Brownlee, who heads our Assistive Technology Department here at the Greater Philadelphia Chapter. And today's topic is going to be about go bags, which are very important in an emergency situation. And before we go into that, if you want to learn more about how to fight ALS or get resources near you, please visit www.alsphiladelphia.org. And if you're not in the Philadelphia region in PA, New Jersey, or Delaware, you can learn about your own chapter by going to alsa.org and learning through the ALS Association. So, Elisa, please tell us what a go bag is, what you put in it, and why it's useful. A go bag is something that you would keep near your exit of your home, your front door, your back door, whatever. And in the bag should be everything that you would need if you had to leave your home in the event of an emergency. And by emergency, I mean uh, calling an ambulance. uh, A hurricane. A hurricane, a a natural disaster. A fire in your house. Correct. Or that instead of an ambulance, you're taking your loved one to the hospital yourself. So you, on your way out the door, you grab the go bag. Mm -hmm. And in the go bag should be... Uh, a list of medications, a physical list of medications, a and and by physical, writing it out because we are so dependent on our technology now. But what if, as you just mentioned, there was a hurricane, a natural disaster, and your phone died? Right. Okay. So you need to physically write out your list of medications, your list of doctors, um, and phone numbers. Because I will tell you, I don't know my child's phone number on his cell phone. Right. I just hit the name. So if you had to call your physician's office uh, because you were displaced, you need a physical number in which to call. Right. You need, um, uh, if your loved one verbally can't communicate, a way for them to communicate, a letter board, uh, a pen and paper if they can still write. Um, and we discussed on... Um, a yes, no, maybe system. Yes. Having that written down and go back would be helpful for someone. Needs. Absolutely. I communicate by. Right. Okay. Um, the national office has a medical alert card that you can get off of the national website. And basically it's a card that you bring into the emergency room that says, I have ALS. Don't lay me flat if you can't lay flat. Don't force me to take a pill I can't swallow. Right. Um, I communicate by. So it'll give information in an emergency setting to the doctors and the emergency room staff of how to care for you, all right? Do not assume that the emergency room knows anything about ALS, all right? Especially uh, maybe you're traveling and you're in a rural part of the United States and you end up in a county hospital. Don't assume they know anything about ALS. Right. And I say that. With the hospitals that are affiliated with our clinics, don't assume they're going to know either. Right. It's just... You don't know who you're going to see that day. Exactly. Um, And you don't know what their knowledge of ALS is. So in your go bag should be that information. And whatever their experience with ALS, they also don't have experience with you. Correct. those informations are important. Uh, Correct. Uh, But also in your go bag, if you have a feeding tube, should be enteral nutrition. Right. If you have to leave your home in the event of a natural disaster, and we see this in California, sometimes they have a minute or two to get out. All right. right? And they're going to a shelter. Well, the shelter might have food for you, but it's hot dogs and chips, but you can't swallow. Right. So you need cans of enteral nutrition. Think about how many you might need for extended Exactly. Um, now, some people, especially with feeding tubes, might have just a bag full of enteral nutrition and water. Right. Okay. Um, if you're using a speech generating device, you might want to have an extra charger in your go bag because mm-hmm. you might not be able to get the charger that's in the house. Or maybe would you need batteries for certain things? Depending. Uh, most speech generating devices are now they plug into the wall to charge. Right. Okay. But either way, make sure you have whatever you need Correct. to keep your devices charged. Correct. Operable. So your go bag should should basically contain any information that you would need um, in the event of an emergency room visit or a visit to a shelter to keep you uh, alive and fed 
for one to two days. And shelter could also be in a loved one's house. Correct. You might be going to your aunt's house, your mom's house. Correct. And you have those basic needs so that at the very least you're okay for a few days. Right. And that you are, you have physical numbers to call your doctor, maybe your ALS social worker, even your friends and family. Right. We all know that we just push the button for mom, but do you know mom's number off the top of your head? Right. Uh, so to learn more about these, the kind of resources that might be available, um, please visit our website, www.alsphiladelphia.org, or find your clinic near you at www.alsa.org. Contact your clinic staff because they can help direct you. Right, and this. FEMA, FEMA.gov. Yes. Uh, and actually in the FEMA website, they actually have a site for people with disabilities. Great. It's a great resource, and it's free. Use Correct. it. Correct. That's what we're the, what's there for. Yes. Um, so go to FEMA.gov, um, especially talk to your social workers and nurses because they might know best for you. Right. And do this as an early thing with ALS. They, they right. Really and we, we all want to live in our world where emergencies don't happen, but we'd rather you be prepared mm -hmm. than be unprepared and, and unfortunately displaced. And one other thing I was going to mention is update your go bag. Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry. I forgot that. Yes. <laughs> as, as your disease progresses, you might need different things. Your nutritional needs might be different. Your, yes. Um, your, even your ways of communicating. So if things change in your disease, things should change in your go bag and where to put it. And also, you mentioned put it at your exit. Yes. Don't put it in your car. Because that right. kind of defeats a purpose if someone has to pick you up in an ambulance or right. you have to go in a different car that day. Correct. Uh, so make sure you know where it is, make sure you know what's in there, how to communicate, how to eat, how to, how to uh, survive as comfortably as possible for a few days in event of an emergency. Uh, thank you, Elisa, for explaining sure. a go bag. Um, again, to contact Elisa, it's ALS, a, it's A-L-I-S-A at ALSPhiladelphia.org. That's Elisa at ALSPhiladelphia.org. Uh, or you can follow on Twitter at ALS Assistive Tech with no H, so ALS Assistive Tech T-E-C. And follow us on social media at ALS Philadelphia and visit us at www.alsphiladelphia.org to donate, advocate, and volunteer or visit alsa.org to find a clinic near you. Thank you. Thank you.